Here we're going to do our first example of Hess's Law. Actually, it's the first part of an example because I'm going to do this example in two different ways. The first way we're going to do like we did the previous video. We start off with an equation that we're trying to find. It's delta H4. The enthalpy change of that equation is, and we don't know because this is an equation that's very difficult to enact. But we have some example equations for which we can measure the change in the enthalpy. For example, when we mix nitrogen gas and oxygen gas in the right uh, right quantities, we end up with nitrogen monoxide. If we have more oxygen than nitrogen and we mix them together, then we typically end up with nitrogen dioxide. The enthalpy change for the first reaction is a plus 183, which means it actually requires energy. You have to add that energy to the equation. For the second equation, again, you have to add energy to make this reaction take place, 33 kilojoules for that reaction. So what will be the enthalpy change for this? Well, let's see here. We take a look at this equation, we notice we have nitrogen dioxide here. We look at these two equations, we notice we have nitrogen dioxide here. So let's take this equation right here. Let's number them. This is equation one, and this is equation two. But notice we only have one of these. We need two of those, so we're going to take two times equation number two. So here we're going to take two times equation number two. And when we do that, we end up with twice this thing right here, so it would be one mole of nitrogen gas plus two moles of oxygen gas and that will then react and give us two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas. And now we can see that on the right side of the equation the product is the same as the product in the equation that we're trying to mimic, trying to come up with in a combination of other equations. Let me put a line around here so we can understand that this is what we're trying to get to. Of course, in this case, since we're doing this equation twice, this will require twice 33 or 66 kilojoules. So the delta H is equal to plus 66 kilojoules because we took equation number two and we doubled it. That means we need double the energy to make this equation work out. All right, what I'm going to do now is I take a look here and I see nitrogen gas and two oxygen uh, moles of oxygen gas. Here I have nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. So, and since I need nitrogen monoxide on the left side as a reactant and I have nitrogen oxide over here, I've got a plan. Let's stick with it and see what happens. I'm going to separate these two and write this equation as follows. I'm going to write this as nitrogen gas uh, plus one mole of oxygen gas plus one mole of oxygen gas. So I have the same thing, I just wrote it separately produces two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas. And of course, in essence, nothing has changed, so my delta H is still plus 66 kilojoules. Now I'm going to add to that this equation, but not that equation, I'm going to add the equation reversed, turned around. So I'm going to take equation number one, and I'm going to write it in reverse, which means I will also reverse the enthalpy change that will then become negative. So I'm going to write this equation. This is negative 1 times equation number 1. Negative 1 means I'm just going to turn the equation around. So I end up with uh, 2 nitrogen oxide gas, 2 moles of nitrogen oxide gas on the left side, reacting to give me 1 mole of nitrogen gas plus 1 mole of oxygen gas. And notice when I reverse the equation, I reverse the enthalpy. Uh, change and so that will be a delta H equal to minus 183 kilojoules. Now you say, why in the world did he do that? What is his plan? The plan is now to go ahead and add these two equations together. If I now add this equation and this equation together, look what we get. On the left side, so we're going to add these two equations together, so we get nitrogen gas plus oxygen gas plus oxygen gas plus two moles of nitrogen monoxide gas. And on the right side of the equation, all the products we end up with, on the right side we end up with two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas, one mole of nitrogen gas, and one mole of, and that should be nitrogen gas, so diatomic molecule, and oxygen gas. All right, and of course when I add these two together, I have to add the enthalpy changes together, so that would be delta H, is equal to minus 83 plus 66. If I subtract 6 from that, I get 
123 minus 6, that would be a minus 117, whoop, 117 kilojoules. Now notice with this equation, I have an oxygen on the left side and I have an oxygen on the right side, so I can cancel that out. I have, what else, a nitrogen on the left side and a nitrogen on the right side, so that cancels out. And what I have left now, on the left side, I have two moles of nitrogen monoxide and one mole of oxygen gas. And I go up there and I say, oh, that's what I got here. Two moles of nitrogen monoxide and one mole of oxygen gas. So as far as the reactance is concerned, I have the correct reactance. If I now look on the other side, and I see I have two moles of nitrogen dioxide as a product, and here I have two moles of nitrogen dioxide as a product, and here, bingo, I have the exact equation. These are maybe written in reverse, but it doesn't matter, so let me rewrite the equation then. So I have two moles of nitrogen monoxide, that's a gas, plus one mole of oxygen gas, and that then, of course, reacts to form two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas, which means that the enthalpy change for that reaction is equal to minus 117 kilojoules. Is that slick or what? I like this. This is just like doing algebra, and somehow the equations come out, and we get the right delta H, the right enthalpy change. So you just have to kind of look at the equation that you were given and how these things are arranged, and you say, okay, I have two nitrogen dioxides here, I have, mm, I have a nitrogen dioxide here, so I need to have that over there, but I need to have twice as many, multiply this times two, put it here, bango, I have this to start with. And then you just keep adding and subtracting whatever combination of the given equations until things cancel out, and you end up with the right equation. So give it a try, see if you can duplicate that.